started as an employee-owned company. That's a really important uh, core element to our success. And uh, we've had a very steady growth record there. We just crossed uh, 306 personnel. I'm really proud of that uh, fact. And uh, we have a top secret DOD facility clearance, a secret processing lab, and uh, we have a 95% voluntary retention rate. That's really important to us. And uh, this year we're going to close at about 41 or $42 million. So really, really pleased with that, that as well. The things that we do, uh, we're in the aerospace, defense, civil uh, in, in marketplace. And uh, we are about a 40% engineering company. We do system engineering. We build models and simulations of weapon systems. Uh, we do tests and evaluation on uh, various uh, government systems. We work on sensors. We've developed software. Those things comprise about 40% of our base. We're also a little bit involved in programmatics and uh, logistics. That's about 10% of our company. But the area that we've grown the most in in the last couple years is cyber and IT. So I'm, you're not surprised by cyber, I'm sure. Uh, we have 43 cyber professionals at our company now. I'm really proud of that. Very highly certified group of people. We're an uh, A-plus member of the Better Business Bureau. Really proud of that. Uh, if, you sh if you're not a member of the BBB, <laughs> think about being a member there. Uh, we're ISO 9001. 2015, so we just certified to the newest standard. And we're AS9100 Rev D. That may not make a lot of uh, ring a bell with some of you, but that's for aerospace. And for we work on the space launch system for uh, delivering the astronauts around the moon and onto Mars, and so that man rated certification is really important. We're a capability maturity model services level two at our headquarters facilities and we're operating at level four and five at other sites. And we spent a lot of time in the last year focusing on the controlling unclassified information, uh, which is a new NIST standard that's required for a lot of businesses in the government sector. So if you haven't delved into that, I suggest that you do because that's really important uh, for us to protect our information. The cyber threats are so uh, real and intense. And then we're ITAR uh, registered, so that allows us to work some international programs. Our customer base is pretty broad. Uh, we work for the Defense Commissary Agency. The, these, are, these are the grocery stores on all the military installations. Doesn't sound really exciting, but we're, we run the DISA, well, we run the global network that ser serves all the commissaries in the world, 250 of them. So if the grocery store's not up, I'll know about it pretty quick. <laughs> because the commander's family can't buy uh, groceries, somebody's going to hear about it, okay? But uh, we run a network operations center and a security operations center for that customer up in Virginia. We work for the Missile Defense Agency. This is the organization that is protecting the U.S. and our allies from the threats of ballistic missiles. So there's a program called Ground-Based Mid-Course Defense that's protecting us from uh, Iranian and other but maybe potentially North Korean threat someday, and that's deployed in Alaska and California and Colorado. We have personnel in all those locations. We work out in Nebraska at Strategic Command doing IT. Army Space and Missile Defense Command is technology work. Uh, we're doing some work for the Corps of Engineers on some uh, site planning, and uh, we work out at Fort Bliss at the Training and Doctrine Command. They, they're doing brigade modernization for the Army uh, at that location. And we're at the four-star command here at Redstone, the Army Material Command, and uh, we're in that building doing IT and cyber. And then we work for some uh, missiles and space programs for the PEO. And uh, so I, you see all those acronyms, you guys gotta be putting dollars in. <laughs> but uh, we're also working for the uh, Research Development and Engineering Center, doing some cutting edge technology development for new systems that are important. Uh, one of our big wins last year was up at Arnold Air Force Base, uh, up in Tullahoma, Tennessee. And uh, we're in charge of the instrumentation, data, and controls across the entire base. So there's wind tunnels where we put models of aircraft in and test them. There's propulsion test stands where we fire rocket motors. There's satellite test facilities. This is we're testing hypersonic weapons up there now. That's a pretty hot, 
topic, and uh, we're, we're in charge of the instrumentation. And then civil engineering up at Elmendorf Richardson in Alaska. Uh, and then we do some underwater manned and unmanned vessels for the Navy and the Special Operations Command. And then at Marshall Space Flight Center, I'm really proud of our team that's developing the space launch system. It's the biggest rocket that we've ever built. And it will take us around the moon first, and then it will eventually go out into Mars. So that will lift off in 2018. So that's going to be a big deal right there. And then we've m migrated into the uh, uh, civil space. We're working for the uh, Department of Interior. So next time you go to a federal park and you're worried about cyber threats, don't worry anymore. We're in charge of that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so our operating locations, I'm really proud of this chart. You know, we started right here in Huntsville, Alabama, you know, just as the first employee, you know, and uh, we, we're in 15 buildings here in Huntsville now. I, I actually probably more because I was, I met with one of the employees at the picnic and he told me he was in a building I had no idea that we were in. So, but uh, we're also in nine other operating locations around the country and we have what we call six field service groups. These, this allows us to do troubleshooting and tech refresh on a moment's notice regionally around the country to serve the commissaries. It's kind of an innovative technique that we use. But uh, so it's 15 buildings, nine operating locations, and six field service groups. I can't add those up, but I promise you it's a, it's a lot of places. I'm really proud of what our team has done from a recognition perspective. Uh, I encourage you to look at some of these awards and maybe if your company would like to uh, participate in them, I'd be happy to share with you some of our techniques because I think we've got a really good technique put together. We, we, we apply for these awards, we write them just like proposals. We do pink teams and red teams and gold teams on them, but real fast, up in the top left, very important, Better Business Bureau Ethics Award in the marketplace. We were a finalist two years and then a winner, and I'm very proud of that because let me tell you, if you don't have integrity in business, you're not going to succeed. Uh, business of Character Award from the Character Foundation of North Alabama. Encourage you to look into that. This is an important organization. It helps do student uh, character, uh, uh, you know, events and they have like papers that, and they give out awards and scholarships so check out the Character Foundation of North Alabama. I'm actually on the board for that now and I'm really really happy to be helping and mentoring some students. Principal uh, Financial picks 10 companies each year to recognize for their 10 best and that's a national award and it's based on your benefits package so I'm really proud of that and then of course being here at the Chamber and uh, being on the board, I'm really very, very proud of the uh, Small Business of the Year Award that we received. And then we also went on to be a Blue Ribbon winner for the National Chamber as well. Inc. Magazine has given out a bunch of different types of awards, and I won't drag you through all the details there, but uh, we just got the 2017 Best Workplaces Award the second year in a row. I'm really proud of that. It's based on a survey from all our employees and some other written materials. Uh, but we'll make the fastest growing companies list. This will be our eighth year for that. We have a backlog to make it 10 years, so I'm really proud. And Boeing uh, has given us their performance award nine years in a row. And let me move on. So this is just some things that make us unique. We really focus on our reputation because uh, people want to work with people they know and trust. Uh, we're very loyal. We'll stay with a team, even if, if, if things are not going well at the recompete, we'll stay with them. And everyone knows that, and that, that's why they trust us. We're very good at proposals, okay? We write a lot of proposals. Don't ask me how many, what our win percentage is, because it's maybe not as high as some people's, but that's how we grow. We write them just continuously. And uh, we've got a very nice fringe package where we take care of our employees and we are employee owned. We are in fact converting to 100% employee ownership and we're gonna close on that next month. So I'm really proud of that. And uh, basically the way it works is the, the tax will, instead of paying the federal government taxes, we're gonna pay the bank a little note and then the company will be transferred over to the employees 
and they'll end up with the company and having not paid anything for it. That's pretty powerful right there. So if you're interested in employee ownership, uh, let me know. And we're very politically engaged to help keep our programs sold for our customers. That's really important. And we're very competitive on costs because uh, we have a very lean uh, overhead. So just from a key takeaway, now some of this is going to sound silly, and I'm sorry, but you know, uh, some of it is very important. And you have to re I have to remind myself of some of this from time to time because these are some things that have been very helpful to our organization. Believe in yourself. Hey, that sounds silly, but you know what, when we started the company, I, we spun a small little group out of Torch Technologies back when we first started. And I, I couldn't make up my mind whether we were going to start this company or stay at Torch with the group. And so Bill Rourke, the CEO, a great man, uh, he, he said, Tim, are you staying or are you going? And he called me in on one Thursday and says, you have to make up your mind. So I was feeling pretty confident that day, and I said, okay, we're going to try this. Went home and watched Fox News, bank foreclosures, government budget cuts, program terminations, and I told my wife, I said, I've lost my mind. What am I doing? So I went back in on Monday and told Bill, I can't do this. I can't put these people at risk. Bill said, Tim, it's too late. We had a board meeting on Friday. We voted. You've got to do this. Whew. So I got in my car and I drove around Research Park and I called my wife and I said, I've made the biggest mistake of my life. I've left a great company and I've put everybody at risk. She said, we will find a way to make it. And the rest is history, okay? Never give up, uh, always persevere. You know, I, when, when I made one transition in my career, I tried to take a new customer to a new company. That's a very risky move. And I ended up on an overhead for six months, waiting on the, trying to get some bit, not quite six, but trying to win a contract. That taught me a lot about taking too much risk, okay? When you're, when you're worried about paying your family's, you know, uh, light bill, that'll get your attention. Hard work pays off. Hey, my mom and dad were hard workers, okay? My dad was born in World War I. He was a teenager during the Great Depression. He served in World War II for four years and two months in Europe and North Africa. I went to work with him before school every day growing up and I went to work with my mother at the stores after school grow every day. So we, that's one of the things that makes us different at InLogic is we work hard, okay, but we have fun. Build your network. You guys are all about the network, but I can't tell you how many business deals have spun out from a networking event. And I try to do as many of those breakfast, lunch, and dinners as I possibly can fit in and still be attentive to my other duties. Know your customers. Sometimes folks come to us and say, hey, I got a great idea. Let's go out on a road show and try to sell it. And I'm like, oh boy, that's too hard. We try to find real needs for real customers and try to propose to what they really want rather than try to sell something new. Learn from others. Hey, I've had the great fortune of working for some super uh, leaders at other companies. Uh, three of those last companies that I worked for went on to win Small Business of the Year from the Chamber. Those three CEOs were Jan Smith at S-Cubed, Dr. Julian Davidson at Davidson Technologies, and Bill Rourke at Torch Technologies. We took all their best practices, we took all their lessons learned, put it in a jar and stirred it up, and we took, we took that base and built the company off of it. So I'm really very grateful for all the help that they gave us. Build strong relationships. Nobody gets anywhere without helping from, uh, help from others. We're very helpful to other people. S surround yourself with the best. We have a super team. And you know what? We've made some mistakes. I even had someone rec highly recommend a person to join our team. And then they didn't work out. And I called that person back and I was like, hey, what did we mess up here? Oh, Tim, I was just afraid to tell you they weren't any good. I'm like, oh my goodness. So. Sometimes you have to make corrections, but you know, we've been very loyal and dedicated to our people, but that's a hard lesson right there. If, you, you, if you've got someone that doesn't fit in the team, just work with them. We help that person get a job somewhere else. They were trying to be a lead in our organization and they were not ready for that. So I, I may have gone too far down that road, but sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, follow through on your actions. That sounds so silly, but it is so valuable. 
We go to meetings and we have a policy at our company. You have to record your action items. You have to send an email. You have to close them. And it, I, my inbox and my sent box is full. If there's something in there, there's something that needs to be done. And we're all very uh, uh, accountable to each other. It, I can't tell you how important that is. Uh, regular staff meetings. Hey, every now and then people are like, hey, we got something going on. Let's cancel staff meeting. No, sir. No, ma'am. We do not cancel. We even have them on a few holidays. I'm sorry. But uh, uh, no stone unturned. We go plan A, B, C, D, E, F. We have alternate plans for everything. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's a lot more work. But in the end, you'd be surprised at how many times the fourth option really worked out. Hey, do the right thing. Better Business Bureau and the Character Foundation, those are really important. We want to be known as a company to trust, okay? And that's why people want to work with us, and uh, that's really important. The maddest I get around the office is when I see someone trying to cut corners, and I, I actually have gotten pretty upset about that. And we'll make mistakes, but uh, that's really important. We teach all our employees to be entrepreneurs, okay? We train them, everyone, entry level to the senior levels. And what we use is something called a progressive engagement model. What we do there is we take new capabilities to existing customers and existing capabilities to new customers. We rarely try to cross that diagonal with new capabilities to new customers. But, but, that, but that model works. See, I can go into an area and I don't have sphere of influence. Another person on the team may have sphere of influence over you know, a relationship with someone that they trust and work with and that's how we continue to grow. Employee ownership, that's really important. It keeps everybody motivated. Everybody's got uh, some stake in the, the game. And when I first started in this business, I worked for Jeff Coleman, Coleman Research. You may not have heard about that, but Jeff Coleman owned 100% of the company when he started it. When he sold it for a lot of money, he owned less than 50%. So see, he realized owning a smaller portion of something big is a much better thing and that's my belief and I learned it first job I ever had. Give back to the community. I try to do as much as I can. You know, I, I do teaching to students. I taught at Columbia High School. I taught, you can be a rocket scientist too at Columbia High School. Those kids that day were doing high fives and cheering and whistling. They would have thought Warner Von Braun showed up. <laughs> But, uh, but we do try to help, and we do pay it forward, okay, to the next generation. And, and that's it, and I uh, thank you for this opportunity.